Okay, here's my current sketch of a best attempt to uh, unify two frameworks that are generally um, uh, considered almost diametrically opposed to each other. So one of those is uh, perceptual control theory, um, which is a control systems-based model for how uh, thought and behavior and perception work. And the other of those is uh, uh, behaviorism, uh, I guess specifically kind of more uh, Skinner-based Skinner, uh, uh, operant conditioning. And um, PCT itself is practically a... Um, practically a reaction against um, behaviorism. Um, and so to attempt to unify these is a pretty pretty interesting puzzle because they, um, yeah, they have very different, different bases. Um, I'm not gonna outline either of them individually in, in too much depth. I'm just gonna try to point at a kind of basic um, way of thinking that maybe kind of aligns both of them. But I guess in brief, um, one of the things that um, PCT gets right, I think, is the idea that organisms are not merely kind of responding to external stimuli. They have, uh, they have, they rather have goal states in mind, some of which are, um, all are, are sort of usually achieved by default. Like usually, um, you're at an okay temperature, right? And, but if you get too cold, you'll make yourself, you know, warmer. And if you get too hot, you make yourself colder, but usually you're at an okay temperature. So that's a goal state, but it's one that's usually met. Then you have other goal states like, you know, something you want to achieve and those you're kind of gradually working towards. Um, and, um, and so, whereas behaviorism has a kind of stimulus response model, that's just clearly not how people actually function in an important sense. And they, they bolt on all these weird things like intrinsic rewards or something as a way to point at how people are rewarding themselves for moving towards things that they want. But there's a kind of begging the question, uh, loop going on there. So, um, that's, uh, so that's what PCT gets right. The thing that uh, operant conditioning gets right that um, my friend Divya pointed out to me is that um, it understands something really important about the nature of training and the importance of really precise uh, feedback, really precisely timed feedback. So if you're working with, um, uh, you know, with animals, you, you know, you're giving them treats and it matters if you give them the treat immediately when they do the thing you want. Um, or, uh, or just a few seconds later. Immediately makes a huge difference compared to a few seconds later. And actually, what people end up doing is they get these little clickers that go and they, they use those clickers because you can get the clicker sound even faster than you can get the actual, um, the actual treat to them. And so, and that makes an, an even bigger difference in terms of the um, uh, neurological correlates of what's going on. And, um, and there's a few other things that I don't fully understand. Again, this is just a first sketch. Um, I'm really interested in other people's thoughts on this because I think I'm onto something, but it's very underspecified. So, um, so it gets this really important thing right about timing, but it calls the thing that is, um, the thing that is occurring that needs to occur very, um, very immediately. It calls that thing reward. And I think that's too laden, uh, too, too connotatively, um, socially laden of a concept um, to use for something so fundamental because then you end up doing weird things where you talk about you know an organism learning how to do whatever and they're getting intrinsic reward and it's like okay well who's rewarding who it's it's you're going backwards with that instead I think what's going on um, is that when learning is occurring you have some goal state that the organism has in mind um, whether that's a sort of intrinsic-ish goal that, or, or a creative kind of goal that somebody has, you know, like somebody decides they really want to learn how to do a backflip or something. Or, uh, and I'll have a, I'll show you a link to somebody getting good feedback uh, for learning how to do a backflip. I'll put a link to that below. Um, cool stuff. Um, uh, for, um, you know, so maybe it's an intrinsic goal or maybe it's that, you know, Skinner's got his pigeons and the pigeons are hungry because he's starving them and then he's getting them to play the piano by giving them little food pellets when they, you know, ratchet towards something more like the kind of playing the piano that he wants. But at any rate, the, the organism has some sort of, some sort of goal state, some sort of um, error in the PCT sense. And, um, and then they are, um, they are acting, um, um, not necessarily with an attempt to achieve that goal, but also with that goal being at least somewhat in awareness, somewhat maybe. Um, and then they do something that 
I'm actually not sure if the awareness part is necessary, but, um, and then they do something and they have this moment of noticing that worked. And I think that worked is a much better, um, or, or what works is a much better, um, thing to call the thing that the, um, that the, uh, behaviorists are calling reward. Um, now if you're oriented towards learning what somebody else is trying to get you to do, then the, that worked might be the, in the form of a reward, you know, monetary or praise or whatever else, but it might also just be the, um, the, uh, the joy that you get, the satisfaction that you get out of, you know, um, seeing a smile on your kid's face when you hand them a popsicle. You're like, oh yeah, that worked. The kid is happy now. Um, or, you know, um, the, uh, the sound that, uh, you know, the sound that your lover makes when you, um, touch them in just the way that they like is a sense of, oh, that worked. Oh, okay. More of that. And, and so the learning process proceeds like that. They're not rewarding you, but they are giving you information that is letting you know that what you did worked. And the it worked is always necessarily on some level defined in terms that, that you, the learning organism yourself care about. Um, and, um, and, and that might be, you know, social regard, right? You know, if somebody's trying to withhold love until you, until you know, the person does what they want them to do, but ultimately it's the organism themselves needs to care about it. They need to have a reference level in the PCT terms for that in order to be able to have the perception of, oh, that worked. It's like that works towards something I care about. Um, so I don't know exactly what the implications are of this, but as I've been tracking it, I've been noticing that sometimes we, we fail to give adequate feedback of that worked. You know, if you imagine, you know, a lover who, you know, doesn't make sounds no matter how good things feel or, um, we, we don't let people know about the tiny things that they're doing that, uh, that brighten our days. Um, and so that's a thing also is just paying attention to the subtleties of like, is what I'm doing seeming to work? You know, uh, visas do 100 things thing. He, you know, he also suggests go and look at the things you have been doing and see which ones do you like more than the others? Like notice what you are doing that seems to be working. And, um, and the behaviors model suggests that the, the tighter your feedback loop is on that, the, the better. Um, uh, and, but it's all going to be in reference to something that you are noticing about what you, what you are trying to do and seeing if it works, which also feels really related to, um, I was redoing the complex homepage, um, the other day and, um, and noticing it, like one of the dimensions of complex that's, um, relatively unusual compared to other, um, systems for managing and organizing what it is that you're doing is that complex has this phase every day where you look at what you did and you go, did this work or not? Like, am I on track here? And that, that act of looking at that feels like itself kind of feeds back into the process of, you know, organizing more of your behavior towards what worked. Um, but it makes me think like, how could that be even quicker, right? Like maybe actually what I would want to do is like every time I complete something, not just at the end of the day, actually assess, Hey, did this thing I'm, I, I just completed really move the needle on something or not? Like, does it feel really good? Part of the issue is you can't tell, um, often, like you can't really tell if what you did worked towards all of the big stuff. And this is why you end up with these sort of shorter goals that you kind of, you know, need to assess out, do they work? Um, and so you're dealing with something very different when you're talking about like necessarily the higher levels of abstraction or the lo longer term goals or whatever, they're going to have a different kind of horizon and you're not going to be able to get, you know, millisecond feedback on whether the, um, uh, whether the sales copy on your website is, uh, is converting better, <laughs> right? Like you write it and you can assess it against some, some of your own, um, sense of, oh yeah, that, me that says what I want it to say, or that's punchy or whatever. You can assess that internally on the level of, of maybe not milliseconds, but certainly sub, sub one second, but you can't actually find out if it does convert until later. So you somehow need to build these feedback loops in at all scales where you find out if it converts and then that impacts your sense of what will convert. And I think this is part of why you end up with, um, you know, learning training environments is because you're trying to train something that you, you're trying to create a situation that has a tight enough feedback loop that it can train a new internal feedback looper so that when you're performing the activity, like writing sales copy, you can 
um, you can notice what that is. So, um, so anyway, so that's my model. Um, the, the key, the key piece here is basically just reframing reward in the behaviorist, um, ontology into just that worked as like a perception that the organism has that is a very fundamental type of perception. And, um, and my sense is part of what, yeah, the dopamine, um, signaling pathway is involved in, in the brain. Um, which is also part of why, um, you know, dopaminergic drugs are so addictive because you take them and your brain reports that worked. Um, the, the, you know, <laughs> uh, it's kind of independent of what it was that, uh, I don't know how that relates to goals. You know, it's like, um, me, may, ah, maybe there is also an intrinsic reference level for an amount of experience of things working or something. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, especially interested in commentary from people who've gone deep, um, into either or both of the PCT models or, um, behavior psychology or clicker training or anything like that. Um, leave some comments below. Um, my channel is still super small. I'm looking and responding to all of them. Um, and, uh, or, uh, or message me on Twitter and we can talk about it there.